ready to start putting the lower fork and this is the lower of the Honda Shadow and at the bottom of course is where this bolt will go but there's a couple of things that we need this is the internals and there's a spring here and the bolt actually kind of goes here and then there's another part inside here this is the internals that goes here so this little bit kind of sits here at the very in the inside of the fork and it holds the nut to the internals you have your washer there look at the bottom of your top part of the fork there's this pretty large hole if you slide this here that's where it sits All right we have the a bushing here and then we have another bushing just look and inspect these to make sure that these are in good shape. It's usually like the color that you're looking for, but um, if you're unsure, just get like a whole rebuild kit and just replace these. And on top of this, we're gonna have our washer that we're gonna drop in. And then you take the upper and the lower and you just kinda push them in and it's sitting there and the lower kind of put together <clears throat> except we have this contraption and the bolt and what you do is you slide this and you drop it in here and hopefully you can reach the the little washer and you can see by holding the fork down like this it, the gravity actually pushes everything together. If you've done it correctly, if the bolt is not uh, threading, I would just consider doing all of this again. And if I lift up on the fork, it's not coming apart. So now we're ready to slide in our fork seal. You might want to put some oil all over it and make sure that you know which side is up. Normally the writing side is up and the bigger slot here is down towards the oil and what you're going to be doing is just sliding this carefully on top of the fork and there we go and then just sliding it down at this point all you have to do is uh, bring the fork seal all the way and push it as much as you can down and now at this point we need to drive this down and normally what happens is that to drive this down you need a fork seal driver I don't have one. A lot of people don't have fork seal drivers and they make something out of PVC where you can just hit it down. The whole point is to hit it down evenly so it goes down into the, the recesses of the, the fork. And afterwards we have a clip that we're going to be putting on. It's a safety clip. And afterwards we have the dust seal. For a fork seal driver, what I usually should do is go to Home Depot and kind of measure things out. Every fork is different, but what I'm using, generally I'll use like something like this, and then I'll hammer this top or the bottom, depending what I want to drive in. And what I'll be using for the Honda Shadow is this. It's slightly different, and I picked it up at Home Depot. It's a one-fourth, one-inch, one-fourth uh, adapter, it's like PVC. And what you do with this is slide this down and this touches the, the fork seal. So it can't be on the metal part, of course, because you just have to push the seal down. And the way I bang it in is I actually have two pieces of PVC. And this one is what I've used for a lot of bikes. And this kind of lets you clamp down on this and just by doing this I can kind of slam it down oh. the fork seal is in here you just have to look inside and the seal is pretty far down the only thing I would do is clean up around it because sometimes the PVC leaves some droppings and you want this to be pretty clean now just make sure that the seal is past that retaining clip and then you put the retaining clip on top both of the seals are in and you should be able to move this 
freely and uh, what I would do is try and clean everything around it make sure that the seal is in there and next step is the safety clip and the safety clip holds the seal in there so it doesn't come out let's tighten this before we start doing anything else you don't have to tighten it very much but And this side bolt is only a 10 millimeter. You don't want to over tighten this. Our bottom parts of the fork are bolted on. The internals are bolted so they're not going to be falling off. I can turn the fork upside down and they'll be fine. Well, it looks like in DC we're getting some major, major storms and I'm still working on the Honda Shadow. So, definitely not going to be riding anytime soon. I just got my retaining clips. These took a while. If you guys recall, the retaining clips on the existing forks were completely rusted out. And I had to order two of these. The part number is 514474610003. They're from another bike, but they should still work. If you use some of these pliers, um, they're not pliers, they're like clips, pliers, they're uh, meant to kind of push it together. They got these little tiny um, little things and you put them in the holes of the clips. It has to go into that groove. And there we go. The clip is in there, we put it in there. It's in the groove, but just to make sure, I am gonna slide our fork seal driver and we're just gonna be pushing it down. And you heard that snap? That's the retaining ring going into that groove very important so here's our dust seal you're just going to slide it down and i have some fork oil on it just to help slide our seal we have a retaining ring and now this is the dust cap and all you do is kind of push it on each side after you get this done you're pretty much done with the fork seal so this is the oil i'll be using i'm using 15 weight fork oil there is 20 weight for coil, but it's not recommended. Uh, 20 is just too heavy. It'll be too stiff. Some people actually use it, but I'm going to use 15, which is uh, five more than the stock one. I believe the stock one might be even be 7.5 or 10, but 15 is going to be good. And one bottle is one liter, and each uh, it's one quart, one liter. So you should be using half for one fork and one for half. So this should be enough to do the entire job. So this might be a little bit hard to see, but I have a shish kebab stick and I have measured from here, the very bottom, all the way to the tape. Uh, and I put a piece of tape here and from that to that is 7.5 inches. And the way we're gonna measure the correct amount of oil is we're going to stick this on the actual fork from the top to the bottom and this part is going to be hitting the oil so once this part hits the oil I know I have the correct amount of oil the way I'm going to measure it I have the stick and it's 7.5 inches I'm going to make sure that I put this and I'm going to fill the oil up to here this is the fork spring we're going to install it there is a direction the tightly wound spring is towards the bottom and if you look at the top part it's less wound take the oil and i'm going to pour equal amounts of oil into these two bottles and the reason i'm doing that is that even though i'm measuring with the shish kebab stick this is another way of measuring So it's pretty much even and I still have some oil in here. The internal is in here and I'm just going to take a funnel. I'm going to put it on. That way I don't spill anything. I make sure that I cleaned it as well. Carefully hold it and then I'm just going to pour it in slowly. You're going to be pumping this up, up and down. So 
go ahead and put the other the other uh, fork oil on the other one. I'm just gonna drop it all in here. Let this drain out. The spring should be there already. If you don't have it in there, it doesn't matter. You can just drop the spring in there. Now I'm actually looking at the oil level. I see the oil level in the, the leg, but we're still needing to put a little bit. Now we're gonna be opening this up and down and it gets harder. It gets a little bit harder with the oil to uh, pump this up and down. So, but you need to do this to bleed out the system. And I'll do this quite a bit. So if you guys remember the shish kebab stick, which is measured at seven inches, what I'm gonna be doing is, with the spring in there, it's 7.5 inches. And I'm looking down to see if it touches the oil, and it doesn't yet, so I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. Not yet. I'm gonna and I'm actually looking down and looking at it to see if it touches. Just a little bit more. Okay. And, yep, that's it. So we have the correct amount of oil in here. The only thing left over to do in this fork is just to kind of pump it up and down several times with the uh, everything in there and the oil will kind of bleed. You know, you want to get all the air out, so you pump it up and down. So one liter, one quart, one liter, one bottle of fork oil will do for both of these forks. So the more you do this, the tighter it gets. So very important to just grab a cloth or something that doesn't have oil. And I'll do this for <clears throat> like 20 or 30 times, just so everything gets worked out. One of the things that happened when I removed the forks, if you guys remember, there was no spacer on top, but you need a washer on top. I'm not gonna install it, but keep that in mind. I have my spring already in here, and the spring is all the way at the bottom. The fork is compressed down. Uh, the thing I'm gonna be doing now is just dropping this washer in there. Make sure that it's uh, correctly set, and it's, uh, so if you just kind of hit it like that, it should go in. Now it's in there. I'm gonna put the spacer, and normally there's another spacer, or uh, not another spacer, sorry. There's another washer up here on the top, according, according to the fork diagrams, but whoever did this did not do it, so I'm not gonna install it, but normally there should be a washer here. If you have one, you might wanna do that, but because the little cup here it actually kind of sits pretty well in the the PVC pipe and it's not going to go anywhere there is no reason to put it if you had a stock uh, spacer you might have to use the washer so now what we're going to do after you pump this up several times is you're going to raise the forks up and it takes a little bit more pressure because it's got oil in there and you need to kind of push it all the way up as much as you can. There we go. So now we just have to push down a little bit. Now the key is to put this on, use your hand and just kind of push down and twist it enough that it will thread just a little bit. And you could use the, the wrench and everything to kind of get past that. So raise up on the fork leg, just kind of push it down and just see if you can twist it on there. So now all we have to do is tighten this. And we don't have to tighten it fully, but I'm just gonna get as much as I can. And then when we get it on the bike, we'll fully tighten it up. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna tighten it fully. Make sure you put that fender 
before you put on the front wheel. That is the fork seals on the 1985 Honda Shadow. As you can tell, it's not leaking anymore. I pumped it up several times. There's no leakage. The only thing you should be doing is taking it for a short ride and paying attention to see if there's any leaks coming from the seals. But it, I'm likely not gonna see any oil because it's new seals, new dust caps, new retaining clip, and that's a 35 year old fork. I don't think they ever replaced the seals because it was so rusted out. Make sure that every single bolt is on there tight. Make sure that the bolt underneath here is tight. Otherwise, there's gonna be oil flowing out. Make sure you tighten these on both sides. Otherwise, the front brakes need to be tight again, but most people are not gonna have issues with that. This is a mess routing the uh, cables for the brakes. I'm gonna be working on that. But otherwise, this should be good for another 10 years. All right, guys, that's how you do the fork seals on the 85 Honda Shadow. Thanks for watching.